mission critical interpersonal skills. How to work with people, how to work in teams, how to motivate people, how to lead people, how to manage conflict, how to negotiate with customers, with workers, with bosses. These skills are critical today. You know, we call them interpersonal or soft skills. Really, these are critical skills in any worker today. If we don't teach them at school, especially for ICT who are more introvert, difficult, you know, people who don't really bond unless it's a machine, you know, these are critical skills to have. And every program that we put in, whether it's a two-day program or a five-year or ten-year program, at the school level, elementary, middle school, high school, university, professional, it has to have all of these things. And if it doesn't, we're not going to get the people we want. We're going to get people like we get in India, and in Latin America, and in China, and all over the place. So our approach has to change. It has to include multiple things. This is a summary. Foundational knowledge is critical. We need to teach people specific things they need to do. So that's important. Facts, figures, numbers, theory. We have to also teach them soft skills and communication, but we need to ground this in experiences. We need to put things, and we talked with the, we talked about competency-based. So I will say, like, we call it outcome-based. It's the same thing, really. You know, we need to solve problems. We need to show people how they can apply the knowledge in the context of solving a real problem on a project, an exercise, an activity, something in the class, something that mimics, simulates what you'll be doing in a real project at work. Because if I can get a company to tell me that they need X from a student, and I can put X in the program, that company now knows that if the student can do X, they want them. They'll provide them with a job. So it creates a cycle where the industry comes in, helps shape the curriculums, helps provide the outcomes, what they need the students to do, so we as educators can put it in the classroom, so we can take this and help industry make sure that they can get the students they want with the skills that they want, so they can get them a job at the end. Teaching excellence. We've done 20 years of research. Okay, this is, I'm not selling you on anything. This is not a marketing spiel. This is important. We've done 20 years of research about the study of teaching excellence, cognitive psychology, and the science of learning. And at the university, they produced a book by the Center for Teaching Excellence, the Everly Center for Teaching Excellence, last year. This book is called How Learning Works. If you're a teacher, you're an educator, or you want to learn about teaching and learning, it creates eight principles. It talks about eight principles that will apply regardless if you teach a four-year-old or a 50-year-old person. Because our mind, our brain works the same way. When you think about the principles of teaching, why do we care? Because every student looks at learning in a bit different perspective. Some people are visual, some like reading, some like watching, some like talking about things. But the principles fundamentally are the same. If you learn the fundamentals about the science of learning, you can create courses, design curriculums, in a way that makes learning more effective. You can create exercises and activities that are more interactive, that help different students learn. You can create assessments and tests and exams to verify that what you taught is what they learn. Because most of the time, it doesn't happen. And you can help understand how to work with students to create more and better interaction, student to student, student to instructor. These concepts apply worldwide. We've tested them in India, in Chile, in Brazil, in China. We know they work. Most countries do not invest in their teachers. Teachers, bottom of the barrel. They're very simple saying in English, those who can do, and those who can't teach. And those who can't teach, teach physical education. Students, okay? So when you think about this, it's difficult. I was visiting India, and the Indian professors tell me, please don't bring your teaching excellence into the classroom. We love it, but please don't give it to us. Because if you give it to us, our teachers will be better. If they're better, they'll go away and work for somebody else. Please don't bring it. We like our teachers the way they are. Not better. Okay? Fortunately, from a country perspective, it's not what you want. This is not brain surgery, it's not difficult to learn. It's a two-day workshop, a five-day workshop, and you can pick it up. Any one of us can pick it up. It's not brain surgery, not very difficult. But 
It is necessary for us to create better education for our children and for the people at the university and people across all ages. So what's a story center? Why are we even using a story center approach? Because a story center approach allows us to put the learning in the context of what we need to do. The Moldovan environment is different than the one in Brazil, different than the one in Kazakhstan, different than the one in China. Every one of those environments, even if we're talking about the same project, ICT projects, the environment is different. The constraints are different. And so to help people be able to understand how to apply the fundamentals in the context of their environment, we have to provide them the environment. That's a story. I put you on a project that is with the context of what you're going to be working on in this country, in this industry, with these clients. So we build a story set of approach. It's a real world situation. Learning happens in the back of the class. Man, I mentioned before, I'm a professor, I know everything, you know nothing, doesn't work anymore. Okay? What works now is the students learn whatever they want to learn. I can only guide them to the learning. And if I can't teach them what I want today, I'll pick it up next class. Learning happens over there through discussions, through talking about things. I become much more of a mentor, a coach, not so much of a guide to knowledge. Knowledge is everywhere. The internet allows you to go out and pick whatever you want. Go pick it. Go learn it. I will help you understand how to use it in the class. Your friend will help you understand what to do with it. You ask smart questions because you're smart people. And I will be able to tell you that probably for most of these things, you already know the answer. You're just looking for somebody to say, you know what, yes, this is the answer. Yeah. And if not, to tell you what to think about so you can go ahead and discover the answer because you want the students to discover the answer. If you tell them what the answer is, they're just memorizing. If they discover it for themselves, they don't memorize. They learned it the hard way, digging through. And that's what we want them to do. So we become much more in a story set approach, a coach. Learning is experiential. You learn things as you try to do certain things. You fail, you make mistakes, you get up. Life is all about failures. I tell people, I drive to work, I get to work, I park my car, I learn nothing. I drive to work, I get into an accident, I learn a bunch of things. I learn a bunch of things. So, unfortunately, learning is at its best when we make mistakes. We need to let people make mistakes. If we don't let them make mistakes, we're not going to have them learn. So what does that mean for us, the knowledge workers? How do we train them? We need to create experiences for them to learn in a story-centered approach. And what that means is sequential courses, focused, integrated. Curriculums have to be designed to have these threads, we call them business threads, soft skills communications. They have to be created within the screen. So when we go to a country to work on a curriculum, it could be Kazakhstan, Russia, China, India, Moldova, Mexico, Lithuania, anywhere we go, and we work in 25 countries. We work with businesses and government to understand the needs, and then with local local teachers at various levels to understand how they teach, how they think, what are students used to in terms of learning, so we can design it with them, so we get buy-in that this is the curriculum they need. And we create a process improvement from the beginning for these curriculums so we can continuously tweak them and adjust them because industry changes all the time. The skills need to change all the time. Participatory multimedia learning. 